so till now we have discussed about the three different stages of the compiler that constitutes the front end of the compiler and they are so the first one is lexical analyzer or scanner this gives me the output as tokens list of tokens it is used by this list of tokens is used by syntax checker or a parser and this generate what we call as an abstract syntax tree or a parse tree and this parse tree then there is a semantic checker that, that performs various kinds of checks uh, to make sure that the program written is in accordance with the semantics of the language. For doing semantic checks we create various kinds of data structures like symbol tables, type checkers, symbol tables to keep to store the types of variables and any any kind of assignment which is not in accordance with the semantics will report an error and these three constitutes the front end okay front end of the compiler now after that starts what we call as the back end of the compiler so in the back end part the first thing is intermediate code generator Okay, what is an intermediate code? So, intermediate code is what we call as machine independent code. Okay, but their representation is more close to a machine instruction or assembly code. Okay, so I can say that intermediate code. is a machine independent code which is more close to machine instruction okay now different compiler designers use different kinds of intermediate code okay so people can use this abstract syntax tree as an intermediate code language okay AST as a directly as an intermediate code language some people use what we call as control and data flow graph to to abstract to extract the information and represent it as a language independent rep representation actually so the control and data flow graph is a language independent representation of the high level program okay and the third is which is which is widely used as an intermediate code is what is called three address code okay now this three address code is very similar to a MIPS instruction that is an assembly instruction how does it look like suppose I write in a high level language C is equal to A plus B then the corresponding three address code will be add the first operand will be A the second operand will be B and the result will be stored in another variable C so this is a three address code because it has two variables and the third variable is the is the variable where the result will be stored and the first argument first uh, tuple is the operator so it is also known as a quadruple because it is a four tuple things okay or a quad okay so so this way the intermediate code is so intermediate the job of the intermediate code generator is to con is to is to take the AST or the parse tree and the symbol table and create and generate these three address codes okay now some languages 
just a second some languages like uh, java has its own predefined intermediate code okay so for java the compiler java compiler the intermediate code generates a kind of a specific kind of code called as byte code called as byte code okay now this byte code is machine independent and what we do exactly so we install a what we call as a JVM or a Java virtual machine that acts as an interpreter and it takes all this byte code as an input and executes the program okay so 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 for a Java compiler the job is completed in this phase till this phase so if I create if I create if I have created this byte code from from a Java program the compiler job is over then we install a Java virtual machine or a JVM that reads this byte code and executes the program okay now after intermediate code representation that is that is a fifth stage is called what we call as register allocation okay so suppose I have suppose I have an intermediate representation like this add a as b c okay subtract c as b t okay then again add b as a c okay this way now <coughs> the problem of register allocation is that I have a set of instructions to execute but in my computer the number of registers is limited okay so the problem of register allocation is how to allocate efficiently the given registers of a computer okay to the variables okay of the intermediate code okay so we will discuss this detail in in our subsequent chapters the problem of register allocation but you people just remember that it is it is nothing but a so in register allocation it is we use certain certain algorithms graph algorithms mainly and one of this graph algorithm is called graph coloring problem okay now what is a graph coloring problem is anyone who can answer so let me uh, tell you so so I have a graph okay So it has set of vertices v1, v2, v3. Now the graph coloring problem is color the vertices of a graph such that no two adjacent nodes have same color okay so for example in this I need how many colors I need three colors so suppose this is red black blue and yellow okay okay so no two adjacent vertices of the same color so we mainly use this kind of graph coloring algorithms along with some scheduling algorithms scheduling algorithms to allocate the registers for a given intermediate code okay so we'll discuss this in detail after we uh, I think it, it is in chapter 5 or 6 okay okay now after register allocation the next job is so this is the sixth stage 
is called machine code generation okay so given the intermediate code we use a translator okay that takes an intermediate code and it generates the assembly level code okay remember this assembly level code is machine dependent okay for a given specific architecture whether it is a linux architecture or a solaris architecture okay x86 architecture or a solaris architecture we create so the assembly code differs okay and hence we have so the so the job of the compiler is is to decide what is the architecture and based on that it generates the assembly level code okay now finally after we create the assembly level code as i have shown in the first slide that we fit the assembly level code to an assembler so let me write it down so i generate what we call as an assembly level code and i fit that to an assembler and linker so my seventh stage is what is a, it is an assembler and linking assembly and linking so, okay assembler and linker and this generates the binary representation so it converts the it translates the assembly code into a binary representation for me, for execution okay so that is why we call the final output as a binary or executable okay and this is and this binary code is executed directly in the, in a computer okay now this assembler and linker are vendor specific or machine specific what what does this mean that the any operating system provides its own assembler and linker okay and hence we will not focus very much about assembly and linking in designing a compiler okay but if time permits i will i will tell you a brief uh, i will give you a brief lecture on how a linker works how to create libraries how to link those libraries those specific commands which will be very useful in your future okay so all this so all this uh, so till so from intermediate code generation to machine code generation is called as back end of the compiler so what is the back end of the compiler so back end of the compiler consists of three stages again so this is intermediate code representation code generator second is the register allocator and third is the machine code generator okay so all these things constitutes the entire structure of compiler thanks